morning. Good morning to everyone. Um, I know a few of you are still finding your seats. Thank you very much. The chancellor just reminded me that uh, if I were an academic, I would know that we need to start on time. <laughs> so we have uh, opened it up. This is the uh, open forum of the San Francisco State Presidential Search Committee. Um, I'm Rebecca Eisen. I am chairing this committee. And we are going to spend the next couple of hours together uh, doing something extremely important, and that is hearing from each and every one of you who wishes to speak uh, to let us know uh, your thoughts about this very, very important presidential search. Um, I want to give you a sense of the timeline of this committee. Uh, we are assembled here. We have representatives from faculty, staff, uh, community, uh, students, uh, the board, the chancellor's office, and others, and they will all introduce themselves to you in just a few minutes. Um, I'm giving them the two-minute warning. Um, but before we get to that, uh, the committee's job, and we take it extraordinarily seriously, is to find the best possible president to lead San Francisco State into the future. And to do that, it is vital that we have the information that each of you has and that I hope you will share with us today so that we can understand the culture and climate and the challenges and the benefits of San Francisco State. Um, once we are done at this open forum, uh, the collective thoughts that you present to us uh, and uh, will be summarized in effectively a position statement, a statement that goes out to the candidates and lets them know what it is we are looking for uh, in a president here at San Francisco State. Uh, and all the information you provide will be helpful uh, in helping us craft that position statement. We will then, uh, in April, spend time together, uh, our committee, reviewing the potential candidates who have uh, put their name forward. And we will uh, try to narrow it down to those that we think are uh, really strong candidates. We will want to interview those candidates, which we will do in May. And then at the May board meeting, the board meeting of the entire California State University, we will further interview the uh, top candidates and make our selection for the uh, president of San Francisco State. Um, it's a relatively short period of time, so all of the input that we get from you now is going to help guide us uh, in that process. Um, so I uh, said that I would like to introduce you to this committee. Uh, it is a fantastic committee, absolutely dedicated to the success of San Francisco State. There are many alums on the committee. There are folks who uh, work every day here at San Francisco State. Uh, they are here to represent your interests, but we also want to be sure that you can express yourself directly to us in this open forum. Uh, so I'll start with the introductions. I'm Rebecca Eisen. I'm on the Board of Trustees, have been for about six and a half years. I've done a number of uh, search committees, and this is one of the most impressive groups I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Uh, I graduated from San Francisco State with a master's degree before uh, some of my colleagues on this uh, committee were born. And uh, I'm talking about you, Nathan. <laughs> and uh, my son graduated from San Francisco State two years ago uh, as a history major. He wanted to be a teacher. He now has his teaching credential, and he is teaching sixth grade. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so uh, in between those uh, several decades in between, San Francisco State has shown itself to be a miraculous institution for me way back when and for my son just very recently. Um, 
I want to thank all of you for coming. I know some of you have come uh, a fair distance and uh, your thoughts are very important to us. We want to be sure that we hear from all of you. Uh, I know uh, we have microphones at the front and we'll get to those in a second, but uh, when you come up, and we'll do that in just about five minutes, uh, please be uh, as respectful as the people who are in line behind you who also want to speak. I think we will have plenty of time to hear from everybody, but um, you know, make your comments as succinct and uh, uh, direct as you can, just uh, to be sure that we can hear from everyone. All right, let's start with our introductions. The first person on my left is Nathan Jones. All right, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nathan Jones. I am the student representative for this search committee, and I also serve as the AS president. Um, so I'm a fifth year senior. I am, will be graduating this May uh, with a degree in business management. Um, it is uh, truly humbling to be able to uh, represent um, all the students here and uh, for you all to put your trust and faith in one student um, is amazing. So um, to be part of this, this moment um, in SF State history, uh, something that will extend, uh, extend beyond, beyond my time here um, for, for years to come is truly amazing. So thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Ramona Tasco. I'm a medical doctor, and I am a 1970 graduate from San Francisco State. I'm also um, someone with a dubious distinction of having been the first person arrested during the historic strike of 1968. I did graduate in 1970 with a triple major in political science, sociology, and psychology. I worked in the community for eight years thereafter and ultimately matriculated University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine. I have a specialty in internal medicine and I have been practicing medicine for now 41 years. In that period of time, I have had the opportunity to work in the private sector and the public sector, both local as well as global. And in that period of time, I have always taken with me my skills of advocacy and my passion for making certain that the smallest voice is heard and that the needs of those who are the most marginalized have been respected. And where it's possible for harmony to be, be brought into chaos, that I contribute to that dialogue effectively. It is my goal on this committee, having been chosen by the chancellor, to be faithful to the needs of each and every one of the students here, faithful to the needs of the faculty, faithful to the mission of California State University as it is written, to make certain that what is written is actually practiced at the highest level possible. We have much work to do and I encourage you all to please actively participate in letting us know what you see in the next president. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Wenda Fong and I am a trustee with the California State University. I was appointed last March and in fact, my first meeting as a board member we interviewed and selected two presidents. So I understand that how important this duty is. It is one of the most important jobs that we have as a trustee, and I take that responsibility deeply. I was born and raised in Sacramento, and my mother's parents came from China over 100 years ago, 
They arrived through Angel Island and they settled in San Francisco Chinatown. In fact, my mother was born on Grant Avenue. I have deep roots here in the Bay Area. And as I grew up, I often heard from my mother that the reason why my grandparents came from China was so that their children would never have to lift anything heavier than a pencil, all afforded to us because of education. So it is a great honor to be here, and I so look forward to hearing from all of you on what you would want from the next president of San Francisco State. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Joe Castro, and I serve as president at California State University Fresno. I'm the grandson of farm workers from Mexico, first generation in my family to go to college, and I understand how important this university is to San Francisco and beyond. Before I served as president uh, at Fresno State, I served as vice chancellor at UC San Francisco and worked very closely with colleagues here on the campus, and I'm honored to serve on the committee. Good morning, I am Soka Hewitt, uh, Executive Assistant with the Chancellor's Office. Good morning, I'm Karen Nakai, and I'm Chief of Staff for Chancellor White. Good morning, my name is David Belsh. I'm a representative of the search firm Isaacson Miller supporting this committee. Good morning, my name is Regan Goff. I'm also a representative with the search firm supporting the committee. Good morning, uh, my name is Brett Barber, also representing the search firm. Hi, good morning, my name is Latifa Simon. I'm on the board of trustees of the California State University and also a daughter of San Francisco. Um, and many of my family um, are alumni of this beautiful university. And for the past 25 years, I've been working in community to advance racial justice, ra racial justice and racial equity um, throughout the Bay Area. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Good morning, <clears throat> I'm Larry Norton. I also am a member of the Board of Trustees of the California State University. I was born and raised in San Francisco in the Richmond District, so I can say that San Francisco State has been on my, let's call it my mental horizon uh, from my earliest years. Uh, it's an honor to be here. I am amazed when I look over the 23 campuses of the California State University system at the really outstanding group of people who we have that serve as presidents of those institutions. And I think that is in a large measure due to the kind of input that we get from these kinds of meetings which help the committee to really make choices which have impact on the lives of so many people. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Mary Beth Love. Um, I chair the program in public health here at San Francisco State, and I've also direct the Metro College Success Program. I'm honored to uh, be on this committee to represent your voice. I open myself to that. If you have things to say, please, you know how to find me. I've been here for 32 years and San Francisco State and what we offer uh, higher education uh, has been transformative for many years and I think um, will be transformative as we and you move forward. Um, one of the things I said to the committee that I think we are all really, really aware of at this moment in time is that leadership matters. I think we know that in our institution and uh, the next leader of San Francisco State is a very important choice, so thank you for being here and for your active engagement in letting those of us on the stage hear from you about what you think is important for us to be looking for as we look for the next president of this fine institution. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Taylor Safford, and I am the chair of the San Francisco State University Foundation, the nonprofit 501c3 that raises money to support the university. I also have two degrees from San Francisco State, both an undergraduate and a uh, master's degree, and I am really looking forward to hearing your comments. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Janice Herway Gumis. I am here as an alumni representative today. I graduated in 1985 from the School of Business at San Francisco State. I am married to a San Francisco State graduate also. We are we had a business here in San Francisco for over 30 years. I also have uh, two children that have graduated from CSUs, one of them here at San Francisco State. I spent uh, six years getting to know the parents and their viewpoints as the parent president. And currently I'm serving on the council for the CSU alumni board. So I like to uh, keep in contact with all the people that have graduated here and hear their viewpoints. And I'm looking forward to hearing your viewpoints today. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Joaquin Torres. Um, it's a privilege to be on this uh, search committee and a pleasure to be here with all of you today uh, to hear all of your insight as we move through this process. Uh, I'm currently the director of the Office of Economic and Workforce Development for the city. Uh, I've had the privilege of serving three mayors, um, uh, a few more than that if you count a few uh, weeks and months, um, starting with uh, Mayor Gavin Newsom, uh, Ed Lee, and currently London Breed. Um, my work with San Francisco State University began uh, around uh, neighborhood service work in partnership with the Public Engagement uh, and Civic Affairs uh, Department. Um, and throughout my time, uh, both professionally and privately and philanthropically, uh, that work has been grounded in the principles of equity, diversity, and inclusion, whether we talk about economic inclusion um, or um, artistic endeavors, it is a um, priority for me to pursue, and I look forward to lending my voice in that way to this process. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so very much for being here and taking time out from your busy beginning of the semester schedules. I know that is quite a task. It is an honor to serve you once again. My name is Rob Collins. I'm chair of American Indian Studies and current vice chair of the statewide academic senate. As we go forward in this process, I always want you all to feel comfortable in bending my ear to a simple but compound question. What are the best practices that we have here at SF State as Gators? What are the best practices that we need to develop to move forward? And what kind of person do we need that can help shepherd us through those that gets us to where we wanna go? Good morning, everybody. My name is Shay Hancock. I'm here as the staff representative on this committee. Um, I work in University Enterprises here on campus, and I'm also an alum of SF State, of the American Indian Studies program. Um, my partner is also an alum and happens to work on campus. We have very deep roots within this community, and it's become um, our, our community here in the Bay Area. So I'm happy to um, serve as this representative, and I want to echo uh, Rob's comments and invitation to um, approach any of us here on campus if you have um, comments that you've like heard um, and you can't you don't feel comfortable speaking now please we're open and ready and willing to, to listen to you thank you good morning um, I'm Alvin Alvarez I'm the Dean of Health and Social Sciences and after 21 years here I have the privilege of actually calling this my home but more importantly the reason why we're here up here and the reason why you're here is the question of how do we create a home for the students that we are serving? Because for far too many of our students, the notion of having a home in academia is pretty foreign. And, and so how we answer that question, how we create a community that is inviting, that is engaging, that allows students to see a vision of themselves that perhaps many of them never ever saw, will really depend what, on what happens in this committee. Everybody here in the audience helps to create that Everybody here makes San Francisco State that special place. But the question really is, is who is gonna be leading us forward and making that community? And so the input that you have today, giving voice, not just to yourselves, but more importantly to your students, I think is gonna be pivotal. And I would really encourage folks to really step up to the mic and represent your folks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Counts Gerber, and I am a professor of chemistry and biochemistry at San Francisco State, and I am the current Academic Senate Chair. Uh, unlike many on the stage, I am a Florida native and came here in 1993 to do a postdoc at UCSF and was uh, lucky enough to uh, get a faculty position here in 1996. I think that we have a truly unique
unique university that is underappreciated, and I look forward to working with the new president and with the rest of you on making the rest of the community and indeed the nation aware of the wonderful things that we do here and the opportunities that we afford our faculty and our students. Thanks. Good morning. I'm Tim White. I'm your chancellor. I'm a immigrant from Argentina, arrived in the Bay Area in 1957 and did all my public schooling uh, in California and uh, went to uh, community college to Cal State universities and to Berkeley. And then I worked at, uh, as a professor in administrative roles at five universities around the country. And now I'm in my seventh year serving you as, as chancellor of the Cal State system. And like many here, first generation to go to college came from the lower uh, quartile of the economic spectrum and very delighted to be part of this search and look, looking forward to your comments today. Becky. Thank you, Chancellor. Um, before we begin, just a couple of things that you should be aware of. Um, you probably already know this, but this meeting is being live streamed. Uh, there are cameras that will focus on you and us as uh, you come to the mic. And uh, it will also be archived. And the reason that we do that is because the candidates, the folks who are interested in the position of being president of San Francisco State, will have the opportunity, even now as we speak or later, to review the archived open forum. And it's very helpful to them to get a sense of this community. And it's. Uh, helpful, I think, also for the speakers to remember that when they speak, they are effectively speaking to the potential candidates for this position. Uh, and you will want those candidates to know what's great about San Francisco State, what uh, needs work, what the challenges are going to be, the full picture. Uh, but you can think that they are either listening or will be listening to all of our comments at some point in time. I'd also like the chancellor to take a moment uh, and talk about confidentiality, uh, why we have confidentiality with respect to our search. Thank you, Becky. Um, you know, both the candidates and the trustees expect us to conduct this search in strict confidence. And the reason for doing so is we really have our, the lives and, and careers of, of many candidates in our hands and we owe the candidates that professional courtesy to, to treat them with that level of respect. Um, many of the best candidates, the people that are at the top of their game currently, a president somewhere else in America or in the world for that matter, or a, a dean or a provost, uh, uh, or from any uh, of the areas where we will be looking for the next president, are not on the job market. And if they were to, to be interested in San Francisco State and if that were to become known to their current employer, it often changes the relationship uh, back home, if you will. And we can't risk that. We cannot uh, have somebody um, disclose their interest here if it's going to damage their uh, current and future there. We're only going to select one president, but we're going to be talking to tens, uh, if not hundreds, of individuals about this job. Um, now, I acknowledge that there are other points of view on how to do a search for a campus president. But I want to emphasize that this is in strict confidence, but it's not being done in secret. Mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, the stakeholders, the students, the faculty, the staff, have all had a chance to, uh, to elect and select the person they want to represent their point of view uh, at the table. And so we believe in America and representative of governance, and so we have folks representing all of the critical stakeholders for this campus, both from on campus as well as the community. And each member that you see in front of you will have a chance to know of every name, every letter, everybody who's expressed an interest or who has been nominated for this task. Um, and we look forward to you participating today and also after today if you have thoughts that you go, oh my gosh, I was there and I forgot to mention the following point. So if you don't get a chance to speak today or choose not to, but want your voice heard in the process, there is a website called President Search at calstate.edu. So it's all one word, President Search at calstate.edu. And you can send in your thoughts about the skills and experiences and values and aspirations and characteristics that you would like to see in San Francisco State's next president. We will aggregate all of that information and share it with this entire group 
as we go through the process of writing a much more elaborate position description. <laughs> right now it's sort of help wanted San Francisco State president and an address. Um, but after today, it'll become an eight or 10, ten page document that goes through the, 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 the values of this campus, the aspirations of this campus, what people see as challenges and as opportunities to be, become even a greater university in America. So uh, please, your voice does seriously matters to us. Again, president search at calstate.edu. And as you speak today, recognize that you're introducing yourself to your next president, because as the chair Eisen mentioned that all of the serious candidates will look at this uh, archived uh, webcast and ask themselves, do my skills and experiences line up with, uh, with the joy and the hopes of this campus going forward? And so you will be introducing yourself to the next president. Thanks, Becky. Thank you, Chancellor. Thank you to my entire committee. Um, and let's begin. So we have two mics here at the front of the room. It's very hard for us to see you because of the lights shining in our faces, but once you're up at the mics, we will be able to see you. So if you can start uh, moving forward towards the mics and line up behind them, and we'll go back and forth between the two mics to hear from your speakers. Yeah, there's one here. Thank you so much for being the first. It's never easy to be the first, but uh, look how brave he is, so come yeah. on up and <laughs> Yeah, come on. And do the, <laughs> do the same, um, please, sir. Um, thank you very much for um, coming. And uh, I'm very delighted that you're taking so much interest in this university. And um, I feel very highly about this university. That's why Would I you just introduce oh, yourself briefly? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 as I'm, I'm as I say, it's hard to be first, but thank you so much for doing yeah. that. My name is Dipendra Sinha. I'm professor of uh, mechanical engineering. And um, I've been here, this is my 32nd year. Before <laughs> I came here, I was in <clears throat> Canada. Before that, I was in England. I don't know how long can I go about myself. I'm a very proud person. So the thing that I would want most in the new president to be aware of the history of this place, like some of you have a volunteer to be arrested and all that. So that is in the past, and I'm very proud of that. But the, going forward, the things that we need to remember that we are in the Silicon, uh, in the Bay Area, most popular destination in the world. You go to anywhere, and I don't want to name any other campus, sir, Dr. Castro, you're from Fresno, but you, you go, to, go to Timbuktu and talk to a person in the street, I'm from Fresno. So the person is likely to ask, where is Fresno? But if I go anywhere, anywhere in the world, and say I'm from San Francisco, oh, I've been there. So we are such a popular destination, and people know about it, and many, many want to come and visit and study here. So the next president has to be aware of our location. We are a very popular location. Everyone loves San Francisco, that is true. And the president better bear this in mind. So that is uh, number one. <laughs> and the number two thing is our proximity to Silicon Valley. There are, there are innumerable opportunities that probably are going a begging. And we need to be very aware of that and try to have rabble with them and get them involved in in all kinds of planning for our, for our curriculum, programs, etc. That will be very, very beneficial to us and to the community. And the third thing I want everyone to remember that we are a public institution. Public are paying mil billions of dollars to us. How aware are we? We talk about students and things like that. But are we thinking of the public who are paying for everything that we have? So in my opinion, these three criteria, if we, we pay attention to it, we will, we will go very far as 
Um, Nancy said that's what I was going to say. Somehow she takes lead over me all the time. So, <laughs> so my, my view is that this campus is uh, not that well appreciated or um, in CSU or anywhere else. This could be the flagship campus of CSU. I'm, as I said, I'm a slightly proud person, but probably I have a reason to believe, and that is doable. So any president, if he watches, please uh, remember that I said that. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chancellor. <laughs> I'm Gretchen Laboon. I'm a professor of biology. And um, first, let me say thank you. I know this is a lot of work for all of you. Um, I want to speak to the central role for research scholarship and creative activity at the university. Um, and let me do this by thinking of someone who's graduating. So imagine that you're hiring someone and you have a student come in who has worked with a leader in their field and has been working in a laboratory or running the, the drama play technical committee for all of their years of college and um, really knows the cutting edge of the field that they're in. And compare that to a student who's just taken classes. And while our classes provide a certain amount of, of knowledge um, and um, can, can really provide a way to understanding, I think those students who have that experience working with leaders in the field who are able to get involved in research or creative arts or any type of scholarship are going to be more competitive and better prepared for the world that we have out there. If you think about attracting faculty, the faculty, the excellence of the faculty we have here at San Francisco State is in large part because of the, the opportunity we provide for them to continue scholarship in the fields that they have chosen. We don't actually get merit raises because we're doing a good job. We don't, uh, we live in a place that's very difficult to afford, but a lot of us are excited about our work at San Francisco State because we love the students and we love that we're given the ability to be those experts, to continue to do extraordinary research um, in our fields through our positions here at San Francisco State. So I would encourage that when we look for a president, we look for someone who has a vision for research scholarship and creative activities on campus and thinks about how that can be or recognizes the critical role that plays in student success, in faculty recruitment, and in the, the sort of joyousness that is on campus. Thank you. We have an overlapping set, set of comments, so I thought we would, would come up here together. My name is Mark Stein. I'm a professor in the history department here. And I'm Aaron Belkin. I'm a professor in political science. And uh, we both would like to underscore the importance of thinking about SF State uh, as, uh, of course, an educational institution, as a research institution, but also as a workplace. And we're, we're mindful of the importance that our next president place on labor uh, relations, and specifically, we're both looking for the next president to have a very affirmative position on respecting, affirming, valuing both the collective bargaining agreement and the individual hiring agreements that um, most of us sign when we begin and continue our work here. The context is Mark and I represent a group of many faculty members who were recruited from <clears throat> other universities and when we arrived here, uh, the administration literally ripped up our contracts and refused to honor them. In my case, uh, it cost over $100,000 in legal fees and three years of uh, fighting uh, to get my contract uh, restored, my arrangement restored. And um, we would both like to emphasize that the matter of integrity in how the administration deals with employees is paramount. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hello, my, ooh, sorry about that. Hello, my name is Gilbert Williams. Uh, I'm a native of San Francisco and I'm a 
the chairperson of San Francisco ACE. We are a statewide organization. We work uh, in primarily um, low, in low to moderate income communities. And I just want to bring attention um, as someone who lives near the university and seeing what's going on around the San Francisco Bay Area. The main issue in my mind is inequality. Um, and I just have to look around uh, my city to see it. Um, and this is something I think that the university, the next president, I feel, as someone who's grown up here, needs to, to tackle head on. Racial inequality in our city is, is something that, you know, is very, it's infuriating to me to be someone uh, that sees um, what's happening to my city as far as uh, we're surrounded, the tech industry, for example, um, you know, doesn't hire people of color. Uh, you know, Facebook, Salesforce, all these great supposedly companies uh, don't, are made up of 2% African American, 4% Latino. This is, this is, I look around and I, I, I see the, the young, young, uh, my young neighbors, and I say they don't have a chance to get in to these great jobs. And so I'm here to say uh, to the next president and to this uh, board, uh, this of, of uh, folks, this should be one of the, the primary uh, focuses of this next president um, and of this university. And so um, thank you for letting me talk. Gong Yi Fa Choi, Chancellor White, Trustees Eisen, Day, Fang, um, Norton, and Simon, and Advisory Committee members. Um, Happy Lunar New Year, and thank you for your service on this important work for the search of a new president for San Francisco State University. My name is Darlene Yi Melikar, and I am a professor and coordinator of gerontology in the College of Health and Social Sciences. I'm also privileged to represent our campus constituents on our campus Senate Executive Committee, as well as our statewide Senate Extended Executive Committee. Um, San Francisco State University, like other CSU campuses, is in need of an advocate and leader with a vision for the university who continues to represent us well at the campus system and intersegmental levels, as well as in the community, state, regional, national, and global levels. Like other CSU presidents, this individual needs to be an effective communicator, flexible, and innovative in addressing what are enduring pillars in what we will consider the California Master Plan for Higher Education. Access, affordability, and quality of education are important issues that impact our current and future students, as well as our faculty and staff. One, access is more than about student admissions. In addition to students getting in, we need sustainable strategies for meaningful retention and timely graduation. With our current leadership, we are making good progress towards Graduation Initiative 2025. However, any new leader may wish to consider what I consider called completer outcomes or return on investment in relation to how our students do after graduation. Two, affordability is more than tuition and fees. We need a leader with business and legislative savvy who helps to address financial aid issues, such as what Chancellor White has been doing in terms of Cal Grant reform, as well as basic needs, such as affordable housing and food insecurity. As you well know, San Francisco's cost of living expenses are very high, and many students, faculty, and staff need some campus-related assistance and support. A leader who is involved in university advancement and fundraising is essential to augment state funds and meet campus needs. Three, quality of education is best served by adequate faculty tenure density, which provides enough courses that students may take in a timely way. 
To that end, a leader who addresses succession planning for faculty and staff is important. In other words, long-term faculty who provide excellence in advising, teaching, research, and service will benefit our students who may avail themselves of consistent advising and high-impact practices such as internship placements, research opportunities, and publication opportunities with faculty and staff. Lastly, a leader of integrity who recognizes that there are inequities in higher education even among students who graduate from college and who makes efforts to close such gaps in opportunity and achievement is important. His or her efforts must address questions related to advising practices, majors and degrees selected, earnings potential, and career satisfaction for our alumni. This concludes my remarks. Thank you for your consideration and time. Hello. Hello, my name is uh, Umani. Uh, I'm with a group called SF Unites. I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity to speak to you. Uh, we've been in contact with um, Vice President Jason Porth and wanting to be connected to these meetings and we have not been receiving information. So we would hope that hopefully we can connect with someone on this body of this committee to make sure that we are continually being notified of when these meetings are taking place. We're extremely, we're, let me start also with, we're a coalition organization of other San Francisco groups. ACE is one of our coalition members, Democratic Socialists of America, SEIU Local 1021, and other groups such as that. We're very concerned how the university is uh, moving forward with various different things. As you maybe know as a body, you have, uh, there's a uh, future plan 2035 that the university is looking to make, uh, make happen. As a community, we're very concerned about the whole plan as a whole. All right, it's gonna be a gentrifying effect to this community because the university, the last two presidents, uh, President Corrigan, if you're familiar with, as well as uh, President Leslie Wong, have not been engaging the community properly. They're doing uh, the bare minimum, but we have been engaging, 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 and as of with our group, we've been working with the supervisor's office, uh, Supervisor Yi of San Francisco, uh, and we have meetings with Jason Porth and the executive uh, various different executives on these different issues related to homelessness with your student population. That's very, very critical. This university has no legitimate data on how many students are homeless or housing insecure. But they've been accepting more and more students from outside of the Bay Area without having the proper housing. That is inappropriate from that standpoint, but it's also inappropriate because local enrollment is being decimated. This university is supposed to be in serving the local population as well as California. We support California students coming here from other places, Eureka, Los Angeles, San Diego, doesn't really matter, but it should not be at the expense of local enrollment. Local enrollment should be, well historically has been at 80% or above, and that has been dwindled down. We believe it's at around 54%, that should not be the case. With what's similar what Gilbert uh, A spoke about, uh, in a very competitive market that you're dealing with, and you have students that are coming from other places that are getting the opportunity to go here to this university to get educated, to be competitive, that is harmful long-term to this community, to the Bay Area. This university has all CSUs are supposed to be helping to uplift working class families so they can actually create more economic, social, and civil improvement. By decimating the local uh, enrollment, we're not helping that. By having no housing for students that are coming here to a very expensive city, you have more homelessness housing and security. We were at a meeting that we had been asking for and thankfully the university gave, which was a public meeting. It was on December 12th of uh, last year, December 2018. And one of the students spoke and she had stated very clearly that, and this was during finals, 
All she had had was a bag of chips to eat all day. There was essentially six executives in that room and not one asked her, how can we help? We believe that the university is disconnected from understanding how to care for its students. We need for the next university president to understand not just to rubber stamp what has been taking place for the last 20 years almost. They need to have a real understanding of a real dialogue that needs to take place about what is appropriate, what is gonna be the long-term effects. This 2035 plan will transform this university from it never being the same. Incredibly harmful. There needs to be a real strong uh, dialogue on should this even go forward. As well as, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as um, this university with the state of California has tremendous power. So as this university does, it's construction, planning, uh, permitting, does not go through the local uh, San Francisco County. That means that the CSU Board of Trustees says okay, and the community has no real say. So they've demolished already 50 plus units of housing. That's roughly 100 plus beds, I mean 150 plus beds. They could have been housed for students that are very housing insecure, needing housing right now. We've asked for that to take place and that did not happen. So we would, yes? To come we're getting yes. quite a line behind no problem. you. But I do want to remind you that we do have this website. I want to be sure all of the information you want to provide us gets to us. Mm -hmm. uh, President search at calstate.edu. Yes, we saw that, uh, yes. And uh, we're not, you mentioned uh, notifying you of additional meetings. The next two meetings of this committee, and the only two meetings of this committee, uh, are not public meetings, so you would mm -hmm. not get notification of that. Mm -hmm. But we do want your input, so please provide it to this website. And, so can uh, you can you notify everyone in the room how we can be more involved? Because mm -hmm. this seems like it's going to be mm -hmm. only with those who have the most power. Mm -hmm. Well, there are, uh, and I, I don't want to take time away from the other yes. speakers either, but uh, there are a couple of community members on this uh, committee. Uh, can we can get in touch with them? Yes, of course. Great. And you I would can like get to have their touch, contact information. Uh, directly with the chancellor, if you wish. I would love to have that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Connie Ulasowitz. I started as a lecturer here. I then became a professor in the area of apparel design and merchandising. I'm currently a department chair in family interiors, nutrition and apparel happily housed in the College of Health and Social Sciences. I appreciate what everybody has shared today and what I feel for the years that I've been here and what I'm looking for is someone that ha understands where we have been but has a plan and a direction for the future. That we're not looking for someone that understands diversity and culture and all of what is wonderful about the student population, the faculty population, but has a vision and a direction of what can help to bring these students forward in the century, to have them understand where they need to go and where we need to go. And yes, we may be unsettled with some of that information, but I hope that there is clarity that can be given to faculty and to students of what this vision is so we can rally behind it. Because currently I believe that the faculty need some inspiration to bring us forward. And so looking for one that can inspire with a vision I think is very needed. Thank you for this opportunity. Hello. Uh, my name is Caden Talesh. I am a fourth year Africana Studies major here on campus. And I'd like to start off by saying, Dr. Tasco, thank you for all of your service for us and for what you did for us so many years ago, but still has such a lasting impact on the students here. So if I, I've written a few things down, but if I spent this whole t my whole time up here talking about the students' issues with administration on this campus, we could be here for days. 
and I am, I'm just one person. I'm sure many other students believe the same thing. Um, I'd like to start off by discussing what has been kind of sprinkled on top of everyone's comments here is activism as a footnote on this campus, as this uh, legacy. But this legacy has not died. This legacy has not ended in 69 or 70 or 75 for that matter. Like these things still continue to this day. Activism is probably the biggest driving force of student, act, like student participation on this campus. That's how I got involved my first year here. Um, and this activism has been attacked by the administration as well as private organizations who come on this campus and attack our students and our faculty members, in particular Dr. Abdul Hadi, who has been attacked consistently over the years. I have been here only four years and I have noticed these attacks on student populations as well, calling out names and linking them to terrorist organizations. And these are by private com uh, organizations coming on our campus. And the administration has had a lack of, of awareness and respect for the students and the professors who are being attacked here. Um, as I keep going, housing. Uh, our brother over there just mentioned how housing is being reflected. The gentrification that's been impacting all of San Francisco and the Bay Area is heavily reflected on the student population here. Um, I myself was houseless for the first three months of last semester. I was, I was living in my car and uh, I was, every day I would walk past uh, the housing units, which he discussed, that were being demolished in use for a, another student center. Uh, I have no other thing to say than that is abhorrent when there are a vast amount of individuals on this campus. I'm very lucky in which I had a car when there are other individuals on this campus who found themselves houseless, traveling great distances to come here and finding that their facilities are inadequate and their ideas and their expressions are being uh, stifled. So next is the policing on this campus. Uh, we have armed police officers who I've been harassed by multiple times, especially during activist uh, demonstrations and elsewhere. Uh, I don't believe that we should have armed police officers on this campus. Uh, in ge general, I don't think we should have police officers who make such frequent uh, 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 patrols of this campus. I mean, just here I saw uh, multiple police officers escorting people as if the students uh, are someone's to be feared that, that the administration or people in suits have to be in fear of. Um, and this idea that I keep hearing throughout a lot of these older individuals who are coming uh, forth and discussing their problems with uh, the administration are looking for a leader or a shepherd, so to speak, when I don't see the student population as being sheep to be led. If, they, if you want a leader, a leader should be hearing what the students have to say because this is our campus. This is not the administrator's, administrator's campus. This is not the next president's campus. This is our campus and he's just making his stay here for a little bit or her. I hope, who, who, who knows who we have in the, in the future but we can't be uh, apathetic and see someone as someone being representative of a marginalized group as them being, we being okay with how the administration handles these issues that are facing our campus. Next, I would say, I would mention the hunger strike that happened four years ago. I think we have some of the hunger strikers here. Four years ago when I made my first, like took my first steps on this campus, um, within the semester, the ethnic studies department was being uh, attacked by the CSU system across the board to down all the way to Long Beach to up here. And since the Ethnic Studies Department started up here, we were hit, being hit tremendously. And this, that is the only thing that this campus really has to be proud of, is the Ethnic Studies and Africana Studies Department on this campus. This is, we're not a sports campus. We're not a, uh, I can't even think of another thing. The only thing that comes to mind is Ethnic Studies. And the fact that that was so, so harshly attacked and the, the eventual negotiations that we had have never been fully manifested is just, it's, it shows what this administration thinks of its student population and what it thinks of its staff and the legacy that they always like to tout about this being an activist community. We're not, this community, although can suffer from the amnesiatic kind of drive of a moving population from, uh, from colleges who leave every four years, 
That's what administrations usually rely on, is the fact that I'm gonna be gone this next semester and no one's gonna know that four students went on hunger strike for 10 days before they got a meeting with the ch uh, chancellor on our, our campus or the, the president on this campus and that police were used to intimidate. We, there were, um, uh, water was shot at them at night because they were spending the night on our campus lawns and they shot uh, sprinkler waters in freezing cold temperatures at students to try and disrupt them and get them off this campus. They used time, place, and manner things to, to uh, stout our, our, our activism. So activism is not this footnote, and I'm, I'm sick of this it being touted as this kind of thing we should be proud of, and that's about it. Leave it in the past. Leave it in this little box that we keep it in where we can rip it of all its radicalness. This campus is a radical activist campus, and it's not going to stop once I'm gone or anybody else is gone. And you think you can change it with how, we, uh, how the president might lead or shepherd us but I, I have news for the next president. You're not going to be the shepherd, okay? <laughs> We're going to be the shepherd, and you can sheep along with us, or we'll find a new one. Thank you. Thank you so much for convening this forum, and I hope that you deeply listen to the concerns of the community and the students who have spoken before me. Uh, my name is Theodore Albanak. My friends call me Teddy, so I hope that you do as well. Uh, I was a master's student in communication studies here before I got my PhD and excitedly came back to direct the speech and debate program here at San Francisco State. I think it's important that the next president not just be a steward of education, but a fierce advocate of the public elements of our mission. And in that regard, I hope that the new president will embody four ideas. The first is that they energize us with their story and their ability to speak to each of our community members, not just the executive cabinet, but in modes that all of us can hear. Second, I hope that they talk to us by cultivating democratic decision making, welcoming collective conversations, and deepening our campus commitment to shared governance. Third, I hope that they help us by sharing a concern for rectifying the inequalities that structure and influence our world, and in turn, make the institutional code words committed action. And fourth, I hope that they fund us ethically by making sound and transparent funding decisions with the public interest in mind and make difficult distribution choices open to reflection and discussion. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Jackson Wilson and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Recreation, Parks and Tourism. So thank you all for serving on this commi uh, committee. I know it takes a lot of time and hello to my future president. Uh, the, the two things I really want from this president are to both be able to be outward looking, but also inward supporting. So outward looking, I know with our current president and the role, getting resources that reflect that we're in a really expensive place to have a university, expensive for the institution, expensive for faculty, expensive for students, and also continue to making those connections between the university and the city, the Bay Area, we're in a very exciting place with so many opportunities and so continuing to make those connections is important. And then the other side, um, using those resources, using those connections to continue to develop uh, who we are here. And you know, using those resources that we have here, such as housing and recreation and different opportunities to continue to build the campus and supporting those areas of excellence where we are and can continue to be. Whether that's the Center for Equity and Excellence in Teaching and Learning uh, or different opportunities that we have to continue to develop. So thank you very much. Hi, and thank you for your service. Uh, my name is Ellen Hines. I'm a professor of geography. And I'm the Associate Director of the Estuary and Ocean Science Center, which is San Francisco State's very well-renowned marine and estuarine research center, where we also house our NSF-funded interdisciplinary Masters of Science in Marine and Estuarine Science. Um, my, most of my service in my 18 years has been around grad studies. and. I would demand that the next president here value graduate education the way it should be, gra should be valued. 
in a place like this um, and really realize that how, again, valuable graduate education is to undergraduate retention, faculty attraction and retention, and to the overall environment of the university. I can't believe that we, a bunch of faculty and graduate coordinators, had to fight to get only a few GTA tuition waivers at the university, and that it isn't being automatically renewed by our current administration. San Jose and several other CSUs already have that, especially in a city like this, to not support the graduate students that we want to attract is, to me, indicative of the fact that I believe many in the administration believe graduate education to be an add-on and maybe even subtract from undergraduate education and retention. So I would hope that that would change. The other thing I want to mention very briefly is this year, as part of the executive committee, I've been um, chair of the Student Affairs Committee, and I've learned things that have shocked me. We don't have, and we are now working on, but we haven't for many years, have an effective grievance procedure for our students. And I believe that one of our last speakers, that the things that he had to bring up are a direct consequence of that. We also don't have enough counselors here. And I noticed that in the latest budget, there is money for counselors in the CSU, and I hope that is noted. Um, I'm gonna stop here, but I, I would hope that we would have in the next year a well thought out grievance procedure for our students and a student ombuds person and an office under that person, under our new president, who can communicate with our students and their needs. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Nathan Bowman. I'm a senior at SF State studying sociology, labor studies, and political science. Um, I'm also the president of a club called UPTAS on campus, and I'll be starting a master's program in educational leadership in the fall. Um, yeah. Um, so I wasn't expecting to come up here and talk, so my, my um, speech is kind of short. But um, I find myself having trouble focusing on the academic side of things when pursuing my education because I spend so much time working where I have to focus on how I'm going to pay for my rent, whereas instead of focusing on how I'm going to um, get an A on a test. So housing, I know it was brought up before, housing is an important issue that I'm sure you all are aware of, but with this housing crisis going on around us, there's a lot of students who have trouble finding housing or are even homeless, like what was brought up before. Um, I think that the next president needs to prioritize equitable housing for students because right now it's extremely difficult um, finding campus housing and if you're unable to find housing, the costs are pretty unrealistic if you live on campus, especially for lower division students. Um, I bring this up because a lot of students on campus feel dismissed by SF State's administration when trying to bring up issues that they care about, me being one of them. Um, and that's it. Thank you for letting me talk. Hi, good morning. My name is Marilyn Jackson, and I'm the director of the Office of the International Programs at, here at San Francisco State. And I certainly acknowledge the comments of the student before me and the other colleagues in terms of local, local needs and taking care of local students. But I also want to talk about something else a little bit more. Um, the President of the United States will go on television tonight and talk about the importance of building walls. And I think that it's really important that we at San Francisco State and the, and the CSU um, talk about how important it is to have bridges. One of the things that the CSU has done very well in the 1960s is it created long-term affordable study abroad programs that 
are really designed for the type of student we have at San Francisco State. One of the things we do very well at San Francisco State is we do provide accessible and affordable study abroad programs to our San Francisco State students. You may not know this, but most of the students who study abroad at San Francisco State are first generation college students. Most of our students are students of color and this is a program that is really um, accessible. We'd like to see the new president champion those programs, advocate for those programs and forward more support and scholarships to give more of our local Bay Area students the opportunity to study abroad. Having said that as well, and certainly I acknowledge the um, the, ho the, the homelessness crisis and the crisis of housing for, inner, for um, local students, we'd also like to see um, a more intentional welcoming of international students on campus. International students are a way to bring international perspectives to our local Bay Area students as a way of forging connections, building those bridges that are so important in the world today. We'd also, um, again, in the support of, our, of all our students here at San Francisco State, when we recruit, international, when we recruit faculty, we also recruit international faculty um, because when we do this because we want the best possible instructors for our students um, and we'd I'd like to see um, some support for international faculty in terms of providing uh, comprehensive uh, visa and immigration assistance. Also for our local faculty, again, a more intentional um, thoughtfulness from the administration of how we can send our, our here San Francisco State faculty abroad and build those bridges through international research and collaboration. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Hamid Kamigami. I'm the Executive Director of Real Estate Development for the San Francisco State University. Prior to that, I was a real estate manager for the city of Palo Alto for seven years. I also did my MBA at this campus. I want to talk to you about several things that the president, new president should be aware and they should keep it in their front of their agenda. The first thing is the master plan. We are in the process of implementing a master plan. It's a remarkable document and it provides guidelines for development, how campus should be developed for the next 20 years. In the master plan, the most important item is student housing. Currently, we house about 14% of our student on campus. And we need to really focus on that. And basically, considering the crisis that we have in San Francisco with housing, this is an item that should be really a critical item, and we should really focus on that. The second thing I want to talk to you about is basically funding. To build housing or academic building in San Francisco, is very different than building housing or academic building in Fresno or Chico. We need to basically, the CSU should really fund San Francisco State differently because the cost of construction, prevailing wages are not the same. And the last thing I want to talk to you about is we need to have a better connection and better profile with a tech industry in the Bay Area to get funding, to get donation, to get grant, to support our academic, housing and academic buildings. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, it's my privilege to address you. Um, thank you for this important work you're doing. Um, I'm Russell Kilday Hicks. I've been on campus uh, as a staff employee 23 years, uh, over 23 years. Before that, I was a, um, a student here. I took my first class in 1991. Um, I was a transfer student from community college. Um, I, I'm currently in the facilities department as IT. Um, and also in my time in the CSU, I've been active uh, in my union, CSUU, uh, both locally and statewide. And I'm a former vice president for the California State Employees Association. It's about 180,000 state employees. Um, what do we need in a new president? Um, obviously to solve all of society's ills. But, um, you know. <laughs> That's probably not realistic, but um, short of that, I have four uh, specifics. Um, recognize SF State's unique place in history. Yes, the 68 strike, which was, by the way, staff, faculty, and student strike, but also supporting the only College of Ethnic Studies in the country and connect with the past and renew the social justice commitment going forward. Um, second is to recognize the CSU's mission as fulfilling the human right of education and the commitment needed to invest in our future. Um, the third thing is recognize the forces out there that have harmed us deeply and interfered in our mission, forces that would corporatize and privatize this great public institution. Um, and lastly, um, recognize the personal pain and injustice 
that those dark forces have caused, um, that the CSU was carried on our backs, the employees' backs, by their commitment and their sacrifice, the long-term employees, both staff and faculty made, and lend support for some restorative justice that so far the CSU has denied at the bargaining table, and even Governor Brown didn't support with his vetoes of our bills that we got through the State Assembly and the Senate, including um, restoring salary steps and a staff representative on the Board of Trustees. Um, lastly, you know, SF State has transformed my life, um, and I've been privileged to serve the faculty and students in this institution from California. We are in the business of transforming lives. Let's not deny that for our staff as well. Good luck in your endeavor and find us a civil rights hero. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Alondra Esquivel. I'm a second year here at San Francisco State. I'm studying political science, minoring in race and resistance studies. I'm also the sophomore representative for associate students. I honestly just wanna say that we need to embrace diversity here. We need to uh, embrace diversity in sexuality, gender, and race. We've had 13 presidents, all male, since 1899, and I think it's time that we need to embrace a new change. San Francisco State is not your average university. Um, my time here, in two years, I fell in love with the campus, and we just need someone who embraces that diversity that is embedded here. We also need to embrace our history from the past, acknowledge what's happening in the now, and focus also in the future, the future for our students. Um, that's all, thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Celia Labona Gonzalez. I don't have much prepared, but some of you may know me. Um, I've been on campus, or I came as a freshman in 2011, so prior to our last current president, and I've been along for the ride. Um, I've been involved in uh, serving my community as a community organizer, and I've served various terms as a student government representative, um, both for SF State and at the statewide level. So I have a lot of experience, and I'm very familiar with a lot of the stuff that's happened um, in the last five years, less, it's more than that. Um, and many people have said a lot of what I would like to share. I think that it's really important that the next president um, focuses on what we what we already have here. We have a lot of beautiful things. We don't need to be bringing in corporations like Coca-Cola or Pepsi to solve our problems. We don't need to be bringing in, you know, um, things that are, are not of our values. We have a lot of wisdom and a lot of great innovative ideas on how to strengthen and empower our community here. And that starts by listening to the students and to the faculty and staff. And as a student here, a very active one, I felt like students have been silenced at every time we've come with great ideas um, or solutions. And also when we've come with um, problems such as, you know, our rights, when our rights are being violated. Multiple times myself, many of the students who are here, many of the students who have left because of these situations, dropped out because of administrative issues um, targeting them, those things need to be addressed. And if there needs to be an accountability method. Somebody talked about a grievance process, but my concern is accountability, is beyond me telling you, oh, this is what I've experienced, um, what actually happens after that? Because I've seen nothing, no changes since I started, really, in terms of accountability and how students are being heard and what we're talking about is being implemented. Every time we ran a huge campaign, and most of the time, it's been marginalized. Um, students have been put through um, disciplinary proceedings um, when that didn't need to happen. And then the whole message and everything being carried out um, has been lost. I think there's important things that the new president needs to look into, such as use of student fees. Um, I think there are millions of dollars of student fees that are being misused right now. Um, Everything from, you know, also our autonomy as students. We spent $90 million on a new wellness center, which I believe should be under the governance of students, but that was taken over by um, the administration, even though students said, no, this was our right, we paid for this. And now there's $90 million and the fees that are continue to be used 
um, to fund that building that we don't have any um, accountability as students. Um, another big fee is the IRA fee. M in my time here, I found out that millions of the dollars were going to fund the library, which, you know, library is a great thing, but that doesn't sound like an appropriate use of instructional related activities fees, which should be going towards many things. For example, our speech and debate team or any other extracurricular activities that really help um, pursue and further our mission and specifically go directly towards students. I think the biggest thing here is that there's a lack of accountability everywhere and it really starts with administration because you know there's a lot of great ideas that come up, they don't land in the right place and when there's issues, whether they're small or big, no one's taking accountability for them. Then the students and faculty, they get upset about it. We start organizing, we do campaigns, and then we get targeted and get kicked out or other things because nobody wants to deal with it. So the biggest thing here is accountability. Um, and also, like I said, just reinforcing what we have, ethnic studies. I think that's something that's beautiful. It's the only college in, in the country, if not the world, that focuses on that. But also integration of these things. Why is it just the College of Ethnic Studies that is learning about these things. These are things that should be fundamentally across the board in all of our disciplines. Um, well I, one thing that I find problematic is, that I've learned is, you know, um, there's, uh, like, the science department has their own ethnic studies classes. Why not integrate and have the science students take classes in ethnic studies and support all of, you know, the disciplines in a way that's more integrated and supports all of their missions at the same time. So I'm a little rambling right now, but I hope that this opportunity extends itself more to more students and we're able to make it. I hope that you all really uh, look to Nathan to provide the student perspective and that you really prioritize students and faculty in this decision. It's really, really important. The last five years, I think, were horrendous and uh, an embarrassment to San Francisco State. Um, and I think that we can do a lot, a lot better. So please look to your students, this community, there's a lot that we can offer. And again, whoever said it, it's not the president that's gonna bring this forward. It's the community that's already here and that's been here. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Hello, my name is Alejandro. I am an SF State alumni, graduated in 2015 psychology. I'm currently doing my master's. Um, in my experience, similar to the person before me, um, we've seen a lot, and I, the three points that I wanna bring forward today is intention, access, and community mental health. That is my specialization, that is the work that I do. Intention, primarily in what, what does the president, future president, intend to do? Do they intend to come here and collect a six-figure salary and simply disregard students and push this forward as a corporation? Because that is how we have been treated for the past six, seven years. Students have not come first. We have been left to a point where my net, um, access is simply not there. Who is being allowed into the university? Is this following the CSU's original mission statement in creating accessible education so as to provo uh, like promote upward mobility or socioeconomic development to people who otherwise wouldn't have so? That is not the case at all. You put us in a place where quite literally the university is acting as a slumlord. Students are forced to house at least eight people to a three bedroom situation. People are sleeping in cars and living rooms. You see actual campers and RVs. You see Winnebago's that are 40 years old, parked, moving every night, because that is what we have been, um, what we have been forced into in order to access this education, in order to actually try to advocate for ourselves and create something new. But the university doesn't care about that. The money's not going to professors. We just heard a bunch of them speak exactly that. They're not even getting paid. So where is this going? How is the system actually like promoting what its supposed values are? Try to defund the College of Ethnic Studies, which ironically you want to simultaneously like eliminate while using that as your biggest selling point. There's nothing but hypocrisy across the board. SS State isn't even compliant with state laws with regard to like trans um, gender non-binary restrooms. So how can you say that any of this process is following the mission statement or what the history of this campus does. So my question specifically to whoever is actually interviewing for this position is what is your intention with coming here? Because you will be met with fights. You will be met with accountability on behalf of the students and the same as the previous president, your violence towards us will not be accepted. 
we have a professor sitting here who gets death threats and like a president can sit and stand idly by. You have students being placed directly in, the harm, in harm's way and you're just gonna stand there and be like, you know what, nah, can't get involved in that. That's not what we need, so don't come here with that. As far as community mental health, again, speaking from my specialization, speaking from what my intention was, what this education has granted me, I would hope that in the same way that the CSU is looking at improving its academic resources and providing more counselors for students to actually get the classes they need, graduate on time, or at least not in six, seven years, mental health needs to be addressed across the board. You have professors that are literally advocating for victim blaming. You have a Title, you have a title IX office or officers that are literally doing nothing to support students who have been sexually assaulted and or raped on this campus. You have an administration that is ignoring an actual student organization who has been found to have, <sighs> sorry, who has like committed multiple offenses, but they're allowed back on campus. What are you doing? What is the intention here? What are you actually caring about? Who are you serving? Because it is about us, it is, the, it is the students. That was the intention of the entire CSU, if I'm not mistaken. And I get it, some of you are looking at me and don't really care, that's fine. We are no, just another profit margin, but at the very least I'm gonna have this documented to show that you were ignorant, that you chose ignorance as opposed to action and justice. Thank you. So we have now about uh, a half hour left to hear from all of you and uh, I hope we will be able to do so. Thank you. Hi, so my name is Sasha Presley. I am a fourth year and graduating senior, um, a dance major and a Jewish studies minor. I have been a SF Hillel student president for two years. This is going on kind of an interim third as well as an intern for them and um, for those of you who may not be as familiar, SF Hillel is the organized Jewish student organization on campus. Um, and I wanna start by echoing a lot of the important things that some of my peers have echoed to you now of the lack of mental health resources, tuition fees, housing costs, and the importance of the College of Ethnic Studies. I think that those things are extremely fundamental and continuing at our campus. I started here, I've spent my whole four years here at SF State, um, and I came here as a wonderful wide-eyed freshman who saw this beautiful campus full of diversity and excited to learn all the things that I didn't learn in my small hometown. Um, what I found over the last couple of years is a university that is extremely polarized on a lot of really hot button, hot topic issues, and a university that doesn't use those moments to encourage critical thinking and encourage conversation across difference. So many of my peers who are not only Jewish, but maybe students of color, women, LGBTQ students have been discouraged from being, or not allowed in spaces of social justice, which is the main mission of SF State University, or SF State, um, the main mission of SF State because of their Jewishness, but not necessarily said in that way. Um, a lot of the time Jewish students are expected to have an opinion on Israel, um, and if you are anything but a binary, it becomes this closed off argument that you're no, you're no longer allowed to speak in. Um, the binary is expected and it's forced um, in conversations in those spaces, and if you're anything other than anti-Israel, a lot of the times you're no longer allowed in that space or you're asked to leave that part of the door. Um, and for a lot of students, that has been incredibly harmful and incredibly polarizing on the campus. Um, what I would like to see is a president that fosters critical thinking and conversation. Um, SF Hillel has so many students with diverse opinions, but has been pegged as a Zionist organization that has no other criticism of Israel, when that simply is not true. And for a lot of students has been really harmful and even being in spaces on campus, and some students have transferred schools because of this, and a lot of students decide not to come here because of this. And as SF State's, or sorry, SF Hillel's student president, um, 
I have witnessed it, I've heard it from my peers, and I've felt it myself. And not only is it moments with students that are uncomfortable maybe in the classroom, passing in the quad comments that are said to you, or questions that are asked of you and expected an answer, but it's the waiting for the next time it's going to happen. And I no longer want students in the future, because I am graduating, to have to feel like they have to come with all their identities and leave parts of them at the door just because there are hard conversations to be had. Um, so thank you so much for having this panel, allowing me to voice those concerns, um, because I think that the next president really needs to be smart about how they go about this and really versed in these issues. Um, but thank you. Hello, my name is Althea Santos and I'm a second year student here and I interned for the Dream Resource Center and I also am a race and resistance minor. Um, towards the president, I strongly believe the president should be aware of the unique needs of our diverse population, especially in a time where undocumented lives are, are being threatened by the current administration. And many students are struggling and have issues navigating policies and procedures. There are countless departments that are understaffed and underfunded, which, is, which in return limits the support available to, to students. And I highly recommend that the president is aware and that he takes into account that this is crucial for the new president because, and he needs to understand that it's important. It, it's an importance of funding both academic departments and student services and equitably. And I just think he needs to take accountability of knowing that there are students that are struggling with homelessness, with countless um, mental illnesses, just everything that has to do with students struggling just to live here and to understand and to learn more. But thank you. And I hope he takes accountability for it. Hi, uh, my name is Joshua Ochoa. I'm a second year and my majors are political science and urban studies and planning. And I am the AS representative for RHA, which is the basically the government who represents the residents that live on campus. Um, I have two messages here today. My main message is to ask of the new president that you are considering to stop increasing the costs of housing. Um, the housing application costs, from what I know, was $270. This is, this is only to apply for housing, not actual costs. $270 in 2017, and then it went increased 10% uh, to $300 in 2018, and then increased 34% this, la this last few weeks. For this year, it's, it will be $410 only to apply for housing. That does not account for any um, monthly needs or any external costs besides that. We already suffered an actual housing cost increase of 4% last year, which may not seem like a lot, but for students um, around me and me, for personally, I live in UPN, my um, annual rent went from $12,500 a year to $13,000. So that is an increase of hundreds of dollars that I can't afford. Um, I've had to take out more loans um, that I will spend probably years paying back that will just hurt me in the long run. Um, students already pay enough for tuition, fees, and housing, and our financial struggles should be acknowledged and acted upon by refusing to increase housing costs. And hopefully, I hope that this committee finds a president that will not, um, that has the, the mentality that they want to reduce the cost of living here. In addition to that, um, I think the committee could do a better job at alerting more students to event, events like these. A lot of students are unaware that these events are taking place, and so increasing awareness would only do a better job of letting students have a voice in this process. I also think that more student representation on this presidential search committee would be ideal, since we only have one student on a board of over 20 members, when we clearly make up the majority of the constituents of the president who will soon take office. Um, so in, in my final comment, um, I have three demands for the new president. One, we ask you to support a candidate who will stop increasing housing costs for both housing rent and applications, and eventually, hopefully, reduce the cause of housing in the long run. 
Two, we ask you to support a candidate who will involve students more in all processes and activities that occur on campus, which includes being supportive and responsive of student initiatives like the food pantry, student homelessness, and more. And third, we ask you uh, as a presidential search committee who will do the best not to, or who will do in the best interests of the students who work two to three jobs just to be on this campus and who strive to earn a higher education and not more private and corporate interests. Um, please keep in mind that clearly students are fed up, angry, and feel wronged by the current administration when looking at the problems that continue to exist on campus. We ask you to rebuild this damaged trust between the university administration and choosing a candidate who will meet these needs and go above and beyond on the needs and the wants of students. Believe me when I say that the university has nothing to lose at this point and that choosing a university president that will actually address, address these issues is necessary. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Bucket Miniweather. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm a staff member at the Black Unity Center here on campus and I'm a faculty at CSU East Bay. Um, we need the president to be capable of really weeding through bureaucracy when supporting our most underrepresented students, um, especially our black students who make up barely 3% of the population at SF State. We need someone to not only listen to our students' needs, but also make informed decisions in conjunction with students. Um, if you're not willing to place value directly on meeting students' needs as the president of S SFSU, I highly recommend that you don't pursue this position. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Kay Gamo. I'm a family physician and I work on campus at the Student Health Service. I've been here for 11 years and um, I want to try to both impress that to the, upon your committee and thank you for serving on the importance of the next president understanding the necessity of helping maintain the health of the students. We've been talking a lot and hearing a lot about the barriers to su student success and certainly the high cost of living is a barrier and that touches on health. Everything seems to, in my mind, really connect to health and if a student doesn't have good health, they're not gonna be able to concentrate on their education. And a lot of our students have many barriers to access to healthcare, so it's really important to maintain a functioning healthcare system, our medical clinic at the Student Health Service, the counseling on campus so students can access it. These students ha are often coming from very limited income households. They may have insurance now, which is great due to Obamacare, but often they have Medi-Cal that is from another part of the state, so they're not able to use it here for outpatient care, only for emergencies and prescriptions. So when they need to see a physician, they need to come to our clinic, and that's the way they access care. In the 11 years that I've been here, though, I've seen literally the, the number of physicians in the clinic dwindle down to half the number it's in 11 years. It's, it's really a crisis, and, and meanwhile, the number of students, as we've been hearing, a lot more students are living on campus at very high cost, and they're coming with this insurance that either has a very high deductible or they just can't access medical care here unless they go to the emergency room. And another uh, kind of dot I want to connect is mental health care. The, we know it's extremely well documented that mental health care needs are going up on college campuses across the country, not just here but definitely includes our campus. And when these students have problems with depression and anxiety, PTSD, history of trauma, sexual assault affecting them, they need to access not only the medical care, but also the mental health care. And often they do access it through a mental health clinic or often through our clinic because they're first coming in with um, problems with their migraines, problems sleeping, problems with panic attacks, and they will access care through us. Our counseling clinic is extremely overwhelmed, so often they will come to us first. So I'm, I'm very concerned that the president needs to understand that if you wanna have student success, if you want the students to be able to graduate on time, you have to give them the supportive services to make sure they can ex successfully focus on what they're here to do. Um, another thing I just want to mention as far as um, why on campus, why couldn't they just access 
healthcare through the county or something like that. And, and a lot of students have touched on this that um, I've been amazed at how many students work full time or more. They're working more than 40 hours a week in a job and they're full time students. They have absolutely no time. You know, they're rushing from here to class and then they're catching the Muni to get to their job. They're taking BART to get back home. It's, it's amazing to me how, how many of them are able to keep that pace up. And they do. They're, they're incredibly <laughs> determined and scrappy students. But we need to support them. We need to make it work. So, um, sorry. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that um, your team, your search committee is aware of this need. And I hope that the next president will have a commitment to providing the supportive services, including health care, for our students. Thank you. Hello, my name is Amaro. I use they, them pronouns. And I also want to acknowledge that we are on stolen, occupied, and unceded Ramatush Ohlone land. Um, I would also like to um, give credit to Zoe Leonard, uh, whose uh, I want to die for president poem style I'll be using to talk about what I want in this new president. Um, I want a president that does not use students um, as a selling point, specifically the diversity of students and different students' um, identities. I want a president that doesn't use the College of Ethnic Studies as a selling point for this university uh, without defending it uh, in whatever power and, and position they can. Um, I want a president that doesn't use, uh, I want a president that sees students and faculty as a combined unit. And I want a president that doesn't try to create uh, divisiveness between students and faculty for whatever reason, whether that's pay, um, whether that's student or faculty rights. Um, I want a president that is aware of the multiple identities on this campus and also that is aware of the identity of San Francisco State um, being in a place that we consider quote unquote progressive or inclusive, especially with queer and trans identities. And then when there's violence committed against queer and trans students, uh, there's not a peep from them. I want a president that doesn't always have to run to a PR firm whenever there's an issue on campus and can be a human being uh, and express those concerns on campus with their own personal emotions. I want a president that is actively engaged in the SF State community and in the San Francisco community. I don't want a president that is too busy with uh, donor engagements or administrative engagements or PR engagements to go to a school event and be with students and faculty that they serve. I want a president that thinks about everybody on campus, from students to custodial staff to faculty to possible people who are coming here. I want a president that runs this university like if their own child is coming here and if their own child does not have access to tons of resources that other people with more status do. Um, I want a president that can act like a human being and that doesn't act like a quote unquote robotic bureaucrat. Um, I want a president that is genuine and that is kind and that actively engages with students and hears student concerns without brushing them off to the side afterwards and isn't just performative. Um, with their solidarity for students. And I want a president who's down. I want a president who can go to wherever, the board of trustees that can go to different uh, members and colleagues in administration and side with students and faculty, whether or not it's popular and whether or not it's what other people who have different interests um, that aren't students and faculty have. Um, and I also, before I end, want to give a shout out to our Board of Trustee Representative Latifa Simon. Uh, thank you for always, always, always supporting students in the fight for free quality higher education and for voting no on that last tuition increase. Thank you. Hello, I'm a fourth year student. My name is Jules Retzloff. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm also a member of Jews Against Zionism, League of Filipino Students. Um, and a new tenants union starting at SF State. Um, thank you, Amaro, for your last comment. Uh, I've, everything that they said I think is extremely important as well as many of the students who have come up today. Um, I think we need a president who, uh, 
who is transparent in all aspects of what they're doing, including budget. I think over the past four years that I've been here, there has been no transparency or active engagement with students regarding the budget and where money is going, um, including the rising cost of housing. I think many students are very unaware um, of the increasing costs. I think it, um, Jason Porf said 5% for the last five years or for a term of five years. Um, and I also think it's very important for the university to be aware that just because you're making housing that is below market rate, that doesn't mean it's affordable for students. Um, many students are also paying out of pocket for college. Um, so we don't, need, we don't need housing that's just at the BMR for San Francisco. We need housing that is actually affordable for students. We need to lower the cost of housing at SF State. It's been increasingly going up. I'm sure that the new housing that we're building, uh, for one, is not gonna be at the same affordable price that the rent-controlled housing that was destroyed was at for students. Not only that, I'm sure it'll be at the high cost um, of what the village is uh, on campus for students. I highly doubt it's gonna be for the many low-income students who are facing housing insecurity versus our wealthier, um, you know, our wealthier students that are coming in from, who are not from the Bay Area. I think that's also really important is when we talk about what is the future of state, we're talking about um, a campus, well, the administration is talking about a campus that's for a community that's coming from many different places in California, but what about the students that are coming from the Bay Area? Where are their needs being met? Um, where are their issues being heard? And I think that they're not. And in fact, um, many students who are on the front within the community are being sidelined and pushed out from their spaces, um, both in the community and on campus. Um, please, if you are coming to campus, be ready for a fight. We're gonna fight you on all these things. Thank you. Thank you for your time and for your uh, attention to this important uh, issue. My name is Dylan Mooney. I've been a staff member on campus for more than 14 years now. And uh, reflecting on the comments I've been hearing today, uh, one of the things I think I'd like you all to take is the amount of caring that goes on on this campus. Think of, think of yourselves, how many people on this panel here have a connection to San Francisco State University. How many years worth of connections do you have to San Francisco State University? I personally have 14 years of staff, uh, but I started as a first generation, low income, first time freshman back in the fall of 1997. And I came back here to work as staff knowing some of the challenges because I love this place, because this place means something to me. And it means something to a lot of the people, all the people in this room. Think of all the faculty that have been here for decades. Think of the students that They've taken time out of their schedules to come and express these important ideas. And so I think this new president, whoever they are, needs to have an, a large amount of caring for this community and to understand its history and to understand that people here are going to, to have some, some, some real strong opinions. And that's okay. It, it's, it's good to be challenging. And, you know, some people are going to be frustrated and, and, and angry but that's what a community is about, is to, to let those things come up and to deal with them as a community. And I think we can do that. Um, as a staff member, I, I would like to, to highlight the importance of staff on campus, because I think that often really does get lost. Um, staff's not the flashiest group on campus. You know, we're, we're not the, the front facing, we're, we don't bring in the money. Um, so it's often easy to see the staff side or the non-instructional side of things and think that those are some of the margins that can be cut. And those margins have been being cut for a long time. I, I survived a year of furloughs here. Um, I, I've seen a, a strained budget become increasingly strained. And obviously, as it's been pointed out, we're, we're here in the, the Bay Area, uh, one of the most expensive places, not just in the state, not just in the country, but in the world to live. And your staff and your faculty and your students, for that matter, are commuting in from further and further away, taking more and more hours out of their days just to make the commute to be here uh, to help this community. And it's, it's, it's difficult, I, I must say. You know, I, I look at uh, the opportunities that uh, some of my colleagues have gone on to outside of campus uh, to make a lot more money you know, in the Bay Area, and you have to really sacrifice to not do that, to be here to work for this community. 
And I think it's important that that president knows that and is willing to take that full multifaceted approach and really start putting in that funding back to the staff side because it's not just a, a cost of living issue. The, the, the lack of uh, budgeting on the staff side affects the students. We have classes that, that go on until 10 p.m. here, <clears throat> but most of our services stop at 5. So that student that commutes in uh, after work for a 7 to 10 class also doesn't have the opportunity to turn in that paperwork uh, for financial aid and things like that. So not being able to support the staff to support the rest of the uni university really does affect your students. When the staff have to take on extra roles, they have to take on additional duties without extra compensation, they now don't have the, the time within their jobs to innovate and create new processes, fix old processes so that we can be more efficient here. Those things all get lost. We have what, uh, pardon me for, for rounding this number, but we've got close to what, three quarters of a billion with a B in deferred maintenance on this campus. Well, with that large of a deferred maintenance and not enough staff to help address it, how will we ever start to chip away at that? So don't lose sight of the, the staff is what I'd like to say. One last speaker. Thank you so much for your patience. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming to our campus today. My name is Sandy Noda and I am the and I work at the Student Health Service and I am the current president of the SF State chapter of the California State University Employees Union. I think Dylan said it best. I share the same concerns as the, fa as the students and the faculty, but I'm also here to speak about the staff on the campus. I ask that in the next president, you select so someone who is going to respect the collective bargaining agreement and understands what a collective bargaining agreement is. Um, we place a great deal of importance on, you know, on the faculty and students, but we often, often forget about the staff. In, um, you know, when it comes to hiring committees, um, I said it best at, at convocation, um, you know, include the staff because the staff are often forgotten. Even in your remarks here today, um, you know, we place importance on faculty and students, but we forget about the staff at the campus. And the staff are the backbone of the university. If we didn't have staff, um, there wouldn't be a university because, you know, the faculty re rely on the staff to to get their paperwork together, to help them with, you know, grading, whether it's, you know, scanning the scantrons through. Um, you know, we, we need our staff. And I think I'm, like my other president said, right, we often forget, presidents often forget who the staff are. And I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in training the next president to talk about when they put in their speech faculty and, and students and have to remind them to uh, not to forget about the staff in, the, in their speeches. So it's, it really is important that the person that you select is um, someone who understands uh, what the staff role is on the campus and um, what the collective bargaining agreement is. Thank you. My name is Nancy Feudum. I'm a director on the San Francisco State Foundation Board. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to ask if any of you would share your vision of the next president of San Francisco State. <laughs> well, that's our last uh, speaker. So um, we, <laughs> I, I want to first, uh, before I respond to your question, uh, thank everybody who came, uh, everybody who spoke, I can't think of a single speaker that didn't enrich our uh, knowledge and our understanding of this remarkable community and all of its facets. Um, one of the gentlemen said, we want a president who can solve every problem. And, uh, and, and we do. Uh, why not? <laughs> uh, but it is, uh, it's uh, not necessarily our job to formulate our uh, view of what should be the president, but to try to 
listen and understand and uh, translate what we have heard into our effort to find that perfect president for your uh, extraordinary institution. Chancellor, did you have any final remarks as well? Well, other than to, <coughs> other than to say thank you to each voice and for all the voices that you represented, but I think uh, what you will learn here, uh, what we will learn here, is this uh, conversation today, coupled with other conversations that have uh, will be sent into the email, et cetera, will form a, uh, a more elaborate uh, description of the opportunities and challenges that uh, uh, San Francisco State faces and the community faces and. You know, if I start listing all the things I heard, I'm sure I'm going to not say one. But you know, the issues of equity, of housing, of being student focused, of supporting faculty and graduate studies and local students as well as international students. I mean, the list goes on and on. We will now take that and create that position description, which is a public document, and you too will have a chance to look at it. But then we will be assessing the skills and experiences of people who would be interested to be part of this uh, vibrant community against the needs and expectations of the future. And so that is the collective task. And as people introduce themselves, if you hear, were here at the top of the 11 o'clock hour, you have some amazing perspectives and lenses that are going to come to this conversation. But we all, at the end of the day, you know, we are looking for one person. <laughs> and it's unlike um, uh, if you were to be building a place to live and you'd say, you know, I like that kind of a sink and that kind of a bed and this kind of a couch. You know, we can't pick and choose at attributes of different people. We're going to have to find that one person who has the strength and the vision and the commitment to lead this campus with its vibrancy of students, faculty, staff, and community uh, forward. And, and I'm confident, I'm confident that that will happen and we'll all be proud of the outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And we are now going to repair to our closed session. And uh, I agree with the chancellor. We are extraordinarily confident that we are going to be able to find uh, an excellent president for the uh, amazing institution that you're here with. <laughs>